Hello everyone, I am Cosmos and today I want to talk to you about the Empyrean Mikela, perhaps one of the most discussed characters in the community, and for good reasons. Even the Roundtable Holds lore master Gideon Ofnir thinks that Mikela is the last piece of the puzzle needed to tie everything together. And in this video, I'm about to take you down a rabbit hole that will make my previous videos look perfectly sane in comparison, and will take us as far as getting into DLC speculation territory. Talking about my other videos, I would like to thank everyone for their support. The reception has been very positive and very encouraging, and I am glad there is so many people out there who are still open to less mainstream ideas. There is quite a bit more videos coming, so be sure to subscribe. And with that being said, let's dive in. Mikila the Unalloyed is a child of the god queen Marika and her king consort Radagon. He is one of the few known Empyreans in Elden Ring. Together with his twin sister Melenia and the witch Rani, they are special even amongst the demigods, as they each represent a potential god to forge a new order and a new age. One of the things that stands out the most about Mikela is his seemingly deeply benevolent nature. The Halic Tree Soldier Helms even says that who it is that Mikela shall bless if not the low and the meek. He would also offer prayers for his brother Godwin, in hopes that he would die a true death. But nowhere is his benevolence clearer than his devotion to curing his sister's affliction. Perhaps due to the nature of the union of their parents, Mikela and Melenia were each born cursed, one with eternal youth and the other with the scarlet rot. Mikela vowed to cure them and studied and researched for that purpose. Under his father Radagon, he studied the Golden Order Fundamentalism and developed multiple incantations as gifts for him. But eventually, the conclusion he reached was that Fundamentalism would not help Millennia, and so he founded Unalloyed Gold. Threading that new path, he forged the Unalloyed Gold Needle, an artifact that staved off the spread of the rot in his sister, and a testament to his genius. Mm. Mm. Well, well, this is a marvel indeed. The work of a true artisan, a meticulous, bold craftsman who grasps the essence of life. And his pursuit eventually led him to the founding of Elphael, the land of the divine Halig Tree, a beacon to the lost and desperate. In this new land, Mikela was trying to make another earth tree, and used his own blood to water it ever since it was a sapling. But as fate would have it, the Halic Tree would never grow to its full glory, and would ultimately lead Mikela to try to embed himself inside of it as a last resort. So, the Halic Tree. Now but a husk. I heard speculation Mikela embedded himself in the Halic Tree. But, before he could finish, someone cut the tree open and absconded with his infant form. We don't know why the Halic Tree failed or why it stopped growing, and we can only guess what is required to grow an Earth Tree, but we can look towards Marika's tree as our best reference. From what we know, the Earth Tree grew from the red primal life of the Crucible, and Marika constructed the catacombs to return the souls of the dead to the Earth Tree. She also went on to seal both fire and death so that nothing could harm her sacred tree. It seems that Mikela, on the other hand, used his Empyrean blood as a replacement for the primordial matter of the Crucible. And from the cocoons we can find around Elphael, it seems that the Halic Tree was also feeding on the people in a similar way. Additionally, the fire of the Forge of the Giants and Destined Death were both sealed when Mikela was growing the Halic Tree. Considering Mikela's knowledge and understanding of the true nature of life, the methods he used should have been enough for the Halic Tree to become fully realized. But yet that wasn't the case. Some would say that the tree was rotten by Melania's Scarlet Rot, but we know that her affliction was contained before she fought Radan, and as such likely wasn't the reason for its failure. And even though the Halig tree is now sliced open, it also wasn't until much later than that happened, when Maul kidnapped Mikela during the Shattering War after Melania had left on her war campaign. And so the question leaves us stumped. There is no outright obvious reason why the Halig tree suddenly stopped growing, or why Mikela tried to embed himself inside of it. But the answer I think has to be somewhere. And besides founding the Elphael, we know of one other plot point that Mikela was involved in. O oh great sun, frigid sun of soul, surrender yourself to the eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. In Elden Ring, the eclipsed sun is said to be the protective star of the soulless demigods, 
The Solis demigods are all the children of Merica, assassinated during the Night of the Black Knives. We previously saw that Mikela offered his prayers for his brother Godwin, first dead of the demigods in hope that he would properly pass on and die a proper death. But it seems that Mikela's involvement did not end there. Lord Mikela, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remained soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now. Your divine halic tree. This is incredibly interesting. It seems that Mikela was the one who tasked Castle Soul with summoning the Eclipse, and he did it in order to return the souls of the soulless demigods. And the mention of your comrade implies that Mikela specifically wanted to return the soul of an individual with close ties to him. But most importantly, the statement I will never see it now, your divine halic tree, raises some questions. From Castle Soul, one can already clearly see the halic tree, and so it must not be referencing the act of physically seeing the tree, but rather that they will now never see it fully realized, and they will never witness the complete divine halic tree. And the implication is that the completion of the halic tree hinges on the resurrection of one of the soulless demigods. Earlier we tried to reference how Marika managed to grow the earth tree to try to find a lead on how the halic tree failed. But we omitted one thing. One thing that Marika had that we are not aware of Mikela having, is a consort. It is unclear what the role of consort or Elden Lord actually is, but it seems to be a constant among gods and orders, and they seem to be needed for the proper functioning of them. As an Empyrean, Mikela could have potentially a lord or consort of sort, or at least a candidate, something that Mog tried to forcibly be to him later. If Mikela needed a consort to grow the Halic tree, it would explain why he would need to resurrect one of the soulless demigods to complete it. It would of course imply that his consort was killed during the Night of Knives. And to that we have ample reason to think that Elphael was not spared by the Black Knife assassins. Just outside of it, there is a mausoleum next to Castle Saul, and also in the consecrated snowfield. We can also find imprisoned Black Knife assassins in the Ordina liturgical town Everjail, the gateway to Elphael. And so, if Mikela had a consort, then it raises the question who was it? I believe many people have proposed that the comrade the ghost is referencing to is Godwin, but I don't think that was the case for two reasons. First, the ashes of the Black Knife assassin Tish tells us that he was killed by the group following the ringleader Alecto, and that they were fleeing the capital, implying that's where Godwin was killed. Additionally, the golden epitaph sword shows that Mikela simply wished for Godwin to pass on, and not necessarily resurrect him. And so I believe I have a better candidate, and the ghost from the Eclipse Church can give us a lead. Encha is a character that we meet after we reach the Round Table Hold. It is described as a silent adherent of Gideon Ofnir. But what most players overlook is that Encha is not the person wearing the armor, but rather the bones themselves. The only time Encha will take action in the game is when the player returns to the round table hold with the Halic Tree Medallion. Gideon will tell us that Encha acted on his own. And against all odds, Gideon might actually be saying the truth here. Oh, my apologies for that nasty business. Encha got rather ahead of himself, it seems. As his master, I'd like to express my regret. But now, Encha is slain and gone. Finished. Forevermore. Encha is actually a soulless lord and king, whose bones have been encased in the armor. The golden royal remains are that of an individual of great importance, who just like Godwin's corpse, seems to have some form of instinct or desire. The royal remains armor item description clarifies that the soulless bones mediate through the armor and the one who wears it, which explains Encha's almost vegetative behavior as he only serves as a medium to the bone's faint will. And so his reaction to the Halic Tree Medallion is as a medium to the remain's instinct. To my understanding, this is the reason why Gideon is even using Encha as a retainer, like a sort of dowsing rod that would lead him to Mikela, which he implies to you after you find both medallions. Ah, I see you've laid your hands on the other secret medallion. I'm glad to see my counsel has borne fruit, but the honor of the deed is yours alone. 
You've made more of yourself than Ensha has. Another thing that heavily links Ensha to Mikela is the way he is described. Ensha is said to be the lord of the lost and desperate, a description that fits the Albinorix and Misbegottens, who found a safe haven in the Halic Tree, and Mikela's own reputation of blessing the low and the meek. If we take a look around Elphael, we'll find these statues laying about of an unknown figure. A figure of great importance, but one that doesn't fit Mikela even in his adult form as Saint Trina. This figure is seen holding a staff like Encha, but most importantly, if we read Encha's other weapon, it reads. A horrific weapon made of a hardened skeletal arm, wielded by Encha of the royal remains, fitted by placing one's hands into its fist's grip until they dig in. O oh, clinging creature, a king relinquishes not the hand. And inside the hollow halig tree, we can find another depiction of that figure, but this time it's surrounded by a number of skeletal figures who writhe in the reeds towards it, the figure unbothered by their grasp just as the weapon described Encha. And finally in the same area with those depictions of who I believe is Encha, there is a unique flower. Those are kala lilies. Lilies in general are tied to Mikala and they can symbolize youth and purity. But when used in a funeral setting, the Kala lilies symbolize an untimely death, as well as a hope or wish for rebirth and reincarnation. And so here is my proposition. Encha was Mikela's consort and lord of Elphael. When the tragic Knight of Knives occurred, he was killed and eventually became one of the soulless demigods. With his consort dead, Mikela's halic tree stopped growing, and so he attempted to resurrect him by summoning the Eclipse and bring back his soul. However, the prayers of the castle soul were not enough, and the sun would not be swallowed. With all his options exhausted, Mikela despaired and encased himself in the halig tree in a last-ditch effort. But there is still more to this. What was Mikela trying to accomplish by embedding himself on the halig tree? These events, I believe, are what will lead us to the long-awaited Elden Ring DLC, which we will be talking about in the next video. This is definitely my biggest stretch of a theory, so thank you if you made it this far. Please consider to subscribe and follow me on Twitch and Twitter, and also like the video and be sure to leave a comment if you have anything to say. Those things really help a lot. With that being said, thank you and goodbye.